At one point in my life, I thought I had everything that the world says you should have to be happy. I had all of it. And what I found out was when I was really honest with myself, I just thought, gosh, you know, there's got to be more to life than this. I want something more than this. My name is Father Peter Marslek. I am the general priest servant of the Society of Our Lady of the Most Holy Trinity, what we familiarly call SALT. Hi, I'm Sister Emanuel. My name is Brother David Brocky. My name is Father Mark Wendling. I'm Ken Dawson. This is my wife, Christine. My name is Sister Miriam James Heisler. Sister Mary Mediatrix of All Grace. My name is Betsy Hess. I'm Dave, and this is my wife, Kathy, and these are seven of our nine children. Salt is filled with priests, sisters, brothers, single people, married people, whole families. In the society, you get to see the whole church working together to accomplish things. We have people from all different vocations serving together across the world, doing all these different kinds of ministries. We share the same goal. We have the same mission, which is to be holy and to bring others to Christ. It feels very different than the church feels a lot of times where everybody's going in different directions. It's a way for everybody to work together to come together to grow spiritually, but also to do um, some amazing apostolic works and, and missionary activity. When we can all serve together as a team, it really is beautiful. We go give talks for the diocese and workshops on marriage, and when we're doing that, we'll have lay families maybe praying before the Eucharist, and our priest might be offering Mass. The priest and the sisters, brothers, other lay people in Salt are who I look to for support. They're who lifts me up. They're who helps me grow in holiness. It's great to have that interaction between the brothers and sisters. This is like a family. And that's what we really desire, is to be part of a family, to be part of something, not isolated and alone, but part of something, and that's something that goes beyond ourselves into the greater world. We've always learned that because so many people have served us, and they're living such a fulfilled life, such a joyful life, that the only way you can discover who you are is by giving yourself in some way. About a month after graduating with my master's in civil engineering, I went down to Belize, Central America to work at a Catholic mission there. Turns out the mission was run by the Society of Our Lady of the Most Holy Trinity. I had nothing, I had no idea what the society, what the society even was. I was there just knowing I wanted a missionary experience. I wasn't planning on discerning religious life. I just wanted an experience to do mission work. I actually avoided the sisters. I, I, I didn't want to have anything to do with them because I didn't want my vocation. I didn't want to be a sister. I really thought that they lived a very boring life. Now you're going to go and put on these clothes and you're going to wear this and you're going to look like that. That part I didn't had nothing, I did not understand it. I didn't want it. My plan was to do one year and to put that in my back pocket and say, there, I did something that makes me different. My year at the mission was truly a life-changing experience. When I had an encounter with Jesus and knew that he loved me and he wanted me for his own, that's what I understood. The experience in Belize changed me. I remember I went to my parish priest and I said, I think I'm supposed to be a sister. And he said, you know, just try. If it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out, then you can come home. Uh, that one year just was so amazing that I couldn't leave because as the year was ending, I knew the work was just starting. What I found in a place where there was nothing was the pearl of great price. I was finding something more. I found a deep fulfillment in life which I hadn't experienced before. And 18 years later, here I am. Some of the most beautiful lives that I've ever seen are lives totally lived out in service. And that's the call of Christ. When you're finally ordained, when that day comes, it's absolutely extraordinary. There's a moment in the ordination when the man to be ordained lies down, and it's symbolic of him dying, of him laying down intentionally his life for others, living what Jesus says, there's no greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. And the man voluntarily lays down his life. When the man stands, he is then ordained a priest. He's been set apart for the service of God's people to be a blessing to all who he meets. Mary desires more than anything else to bring us to her son. We are dedicated and devoted to the Blessed Virgin Mary. She is our greatest advocate. You know, she's my model, she's my mother, she's the most pure, most holy, best and first disciple. We try to imitate our Blessed Mother in the relationships that she had with the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. 
Mary is our example of how to love God and how to love others. As Mary looked after Jesus and his needs, we are called to look after the people in the body of Christ. Sometimes we work in parishes, sometimes we work in classrooms, sometimes we go to hospitals. Unlike other religious communities which have as a part of their mission a very specific work or apostolate such as teaching or such as health care, we serve in whatever way we possibly can the areas of what we call deepest apostolic need. We serve in any area that a bishop invites us to serve and sees a great need. We have a drug rehabilitation clinics in Thailand, an orphanage in Mexico. In the Philippines, we have many island parishes. I joke and I tell people, I say, enter the convent and I see the world. I never would have imagined the places that I've been able to travel. We also have a remote location in Papua New Guinea. We have a number of inner city parishes in places like Detroit and Phoenix and Corpus Christi. We have a Native American reservation in North Dakota, as well as parish missions in Belize, Central America, and Guatemala, as well as Mexico. The church is always in mission. Her very nature is to evangelize and to be in mission, in service of the poor. And wherever we find the poor, you'll always find the church at work. Being a part of Saul is definitely a great adventure. Uh, it's filled with a lot of unknowns, which at times can be trying. We're moving quite a bit, but um, I think that's the blessing of we go where, where there's a need and we, we have that freedom to go. If I would have married, I would have married a farmer and I would have been stationed in Minnesota and I'd been there the rest of my life and that would have been it. But I entered the convent. What I found is that it's, it's definitely worth it. There's a lot of hard work and sacrifice, but it's also there's a lot of fun, a lot of blessings, a lot of good times. I'm excited to see where God is going to lead me to be able to experience that. Maybe you're desiring something more. Maybe you're being called to sold. Your life matters. You are called to a divine destiny. And I don't know what that is, but I know that God is calling you to something. Maybe you're called to be married, to be single, to be a brother, a sister, or a priest. But with the Society of Our Lady, every person can answer the call to holiness and to serve in the missionary work of the church. One of the missions of our community is prayer. And so we are taking all of the prayers that you've offered and all of you who are watching this, and we're lifting them to God on your behalf. And we'd like to ask, if, if you pray for us too, we would really appreciate it. Those prayers rise like incense right to the very heart of God where He delights to answer our prayer because He loves us. The needs that our community serves around the world are great. If you are interested in helping to support our community or perhaps even in joining our community, we would love to talk to you. Please come and see.